My name is Jermaine Hodge. I'm a Sergeant First Class in the U.S. Army. I have served our country for 19 plus years as a 68 Whiskey Combat Medic. I'm a former wrestler and now coach for the U.S. World Class Athlete Program. These professional facts only make up a part of the man I am, but do little to describe what I'm all about. On the surface, I'm a husband, father, soldier, wrestler, coach, but further within, there is even a larger part of me, a hunter. The true fabric of who I am and why I exist, what motivates me, what drives me, my attraction to the outdoors, living on the edge of the mountains, pushing my body, my soul, my mind, my spirit to its limits. Surviving in some of the extreme places, doing what many will not even do or attempt to do. My dedication to this lifestyle is something that I can't do without. It's my addiction. It's something that I have to do to quench my soul's thirst. Along the way, I've been privileged to hunt with a lot of good buddies, a lot of good hunters. My buddy Patrick Latrell, Army veteran, 12 Bravo combat engineer, former coach, and now currently a history school teacher. Let me not forget young gun Jesse. He's a young entrepreneur motivated to get in the game, just started hunting up really for the first time. This is a team that I built for this journey. A wonderful team, but ones that have the same goals as me. I'm not sure why, but I have always gravitated to things in life that were tough. The challenges of hiking mountains, walking miles and miles each day, and calling bulls into close proximity, my passion, and God willing, something I'm always gonna plan to do for the rest of my life. This is my why. This is my story. This is elk hunting. Just see if we can get something this out. Okay.
Ahí está. Nice. He was a little five by five. He had some really his, his brown ties were long. Dude. See, there's something on the other drainage on the other side. This stuff's thick. These elk walk through this stuff like snow. I gotta go like this. Than we normally like, but it's open day, right? Um, we did manage to call up two bulls, uh, one spike in a, in a small five point, um, but it just was a lot slower than normal. But we also seen a campsite up here, another truck over here, and I know we were the first ones in here, so that's public land hunting. We just gotta get them to sound off. All it takes is one. One bull and one that wants to play the game. He's like a five, 35, 40 years. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I see it. I don't want to go back in here and nothing else and chasing ghosts. So just, uh, Cool, cool to see some Colorado moose. Yeah, that was fun. But I'm after elk.
Sometimes they sound off, sometimes they don't. But I refuse to walk around the woods knowing that we got elk in certain spots. Sometimes you gotta get right in that zone, man. Like that 100, 200 yards before they fing sound off. It, it'll drive you nuts. But sometimes that's what it takes. You get into an area and then you just get like two two callers and y'all just go to town. Yeah, no guy in town. My my North Carolina buddy. We ran out of waivers on the side. We got a new guy in town. We don't take a responsibility for it. He flew in. Be on camera. Okay. He, flew, he flew in today. <laughs> and uh, we've been passing up so many bulls. Passing up so many bulls that I couldn't help. I gotta bring my second string in. My second string's gonna kill all the bulls that I'm passing up because they ain't gonna pass up no bulls. <laughs> but I'm gonna get back in here and see if we can get this done. I'm sure.
well, the evening hunt just came to an end, but my buddy Nate just got here. And I'm going to tell you what, we got into some bulls tonight. They weren't really, like, talking, talking, but it was a bunch of bulls in there. I think we're going to just say 17. 17. We know we know we said seven, but we're going to say 17. 27. <laughs> no, it's, it's some bulls in there. I think in the morning that we'll, we'll get them here and get them really screaming. They were talking, but I think they were talking just because we were talking. So it's going to be a eventful morning, I'm, I'm sure of it. We had a couple of them that we thought that were going to come in and it never just happened. And then we snuck in and had a couple bulls that were probably 100 yards from us and just didn't happen. But that's a that's a good day, Nate. Yes, sir. Man. Enjoy it. Heck yeah. stay in here. The bees are bad. The flies are bad. 
Everything's trying to bite you and eat you. Here, wheel is shorter. We'll move a little closer, see if we can get him out of. This morning, we came into an area that we nicknamed after my wife. We had two different bulls in there, which is only probably right around a mile and a half to two miles from the truck. But they didn't really want to play. And I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna, like a hunter that I want one to play the game, not just bugle and then go away. I want you to bugle and, and we just get into some, some war or I call you in with cow calls or something. But those two didn't want to play and only one of them sounded decent. But you never know what these, you know, sounds could be deceiving. And then uh, we skirted in a little, a lot deeper. Went and went deeper in and checked this spot we call Jurassic Park. It's usually on fire. It was elk sign everywhere. But it didn't pan out so then we jumped over into another ridge because we had some hunters down low it was only probably three hunters down there uh, i don't three vehicles but i didn't care that they were there i was just gonna go in anyways and they pushed in at the edge of jurassic park because i could hear one of the hunters down there bugling so we decided to bump cross the drainage and get over and check this other basin which is just over to the right of it. And when we did that, we got some bulls fired off. So what I think is a lot of the elk got pushed over into here. <laughs> yep. And now he just beagled again and uh, we might go down there and kill him. Look, nope, we're going. <laughs> He's down at the bottom. I like the way that one sounds. I say we go after this one.
we either gonna be on that level or we gotta stay below them. Because if we're too high, they'll smell us. I can tell you right now, today was phenomenal. It ended horrible, but today was phenomenal. We had countless encounters. But what I really want to tell you is, at the end of the day, we took a drainage out with hopes of someone driving this dirt road. And lo and behold, someone drove the road and gave me a ride to my truck. But what I, I failed to do is I had one of those coolers that you could plug in and it keeps everything cold. And uh, I forgot to unplug it and it sat for uh, 15 hours straight up and it killed my battery. So the guy dropped me off in my truck and then next thing you know, he took off, my truck was dead. And I'm 2.78 miles from camp. And my buddy's keys are in the, the my truck. And I'm like, oh. I said, well, I just grab my damn keys. And I took off running. I get to camp and I grab my buddy's truck and kind of finish it off. And then jump the truck. And, and now here we are on the road. But we had some great encounters tonight. And it was amazing. What I will tell you, though, it's worth it's worth everything, everything that we've done today.
There's one at 160 right here. See him? That's a full. <laughs> He's got a cow above him.
Up here with, with the one on that guy. Now, if he just had the ladies, he probably would have came closer. So, at least came to came to look. What well, the situation was different? What would be a situation that you would walk in and people or at least his? Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily, right? So, if I was closer to a herd bull, and I wanted to kind of show him that I'm. I'm sneaking in and being and want to steal his ladies. I would bugle first, and that's really close. Like how close we were to this guy, we could have bugled and he could have bugled, and then pulled him closer because we're getting too close to the herd, so he doesn't see him yet. But he pulls him closer. I was too afraid to bugle. So in that situation, at the very beginning, I would have. I would have bugled if I was closer to that bull to talk to the ladies a little bit. In that situation, the bull was just over the hill, and then there was a bull up above us. Also, I'm cow talking. They talking on their own. I'm just going. When there's multiple bulls talking like that, yeah, it's a good time to cow sound. Yeah, you your bull. But if you got one bull, it's a herd bull. Right. And you're trying to sneak in. As a I get in close and then bugle. And now he's got to, he put his back against the wall and he has to be forced to come in closer. Either come in to fight you or he'll push his cow super hard. Yeah. I think that's what happened right there with that one. Well, I think the other big bull. Yeah, the, the, the other bull was he's, too close. He pushed his cow. Exactly, the other bull was too close to the dam, to the herd. So he pushed it, pushed him up. He, he sounded just as big. Let's go see if we can find him over here. Bugle, send it out, we'll listen, and then location with a chuckle.
generation is. But I think I just seen them fall. Like a five, small five, branch one. Like I said, nasty pullback. I know. But I've seen them. He was 20, and I just put my 30 on him. in there just doing some damage. I thought I seen him fall, but he must have got back up because I kept looking, kept cow calling, and I seen him tumble. I heard him and seen him, boom, boom. Then he must have got back up because I was hearing more stuff. But I think, I think y'all said, y'all heard him gurgling, but all I could hear was those other bones going nuts. Stuff happens for a reason. Yeah. I just knew that if we didn't, if we hunted that trail in, we were going to skip some bulls. Oh, man, we had to dive up in hardcore. Plus, everything we've had, we've been going right at them. By the time we get real close to them, they're just going straight up. And we just got in tight with this herd and called in the satellite up the herd. And, and we cut them off. Yep. I think these guys have been working up. They was working up the whole time. together boys that's awesome he feels that where I thought he fell now the work begins but this is the fun work what you just do Jermaine I put the smack down can you smell what the rocks are Point one. Yeah. 
times. Ten more times. Oh, look at Jesse back here. Showing us the muscles. Oh man, I just made it inappropriate for kids. <laughs> you sound like the garbage man. I think it's so ate up. I need to even breathe. You sound like the garbage man. It's Come so blown. <laughs> it's so blown out. This weed is so blown out. You sound like the garbage man yeah. coming to get the trash. <laughs> the very next day, I managed to call this bull in for my buddy Pat, who had a tag and held off all season until we got this done. Congratulations on an awesome bull.